everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Friday, November 16th, and we've got a lot of Hearthstone to play, so let's just jump into it right now. We've got tons of news. We probably don't actually have that much Hearthstone to play, uh, but we do have a lot of news. Hero power, 20 times while doing a dungeon run bosses. I wonder if that will work. I guess I just want to double check to make sure I've done the tavern brawls. Yeah, I have. Alright, so I just need to hop into dungeon run bosses. We're on the European account. So, dungeon run here. I don't believe I've won with any of the dungeon runs on the European account either. Um, and I doubt I ever will. So, we have a ton of news. Let's hop into it really quickly. I said that already. So, Gamma Sutra has an article, despite China's gaming freeze, mobile gaming revenue is still on the rise at Tencent. Uh, Tencent's game business saw a rise of revenue for mobile game during the third quarter of the company's fiscal year, though PC game revenue fell by 15% during the same period. Um, so, what this, I guess, means, if you were to take from that is either Tencent like so many companies is manipulating its uh, its revenue uh, accounting or because there were no new games out there uh, to uh, to play people went back to older Tencent games that had already been approved and uh, Thus, the older games got more microtransactions and revenue that way, or people bought older I games. Like yeah, Tencent is still in a pickle, as all are all Chinese companies. Uh, it really is just a matter of how much money they really had in their bank uh, to save up for a rainy day, and most video game developers don't save up any money for a rainy day look to Telltale to see that example. So it's very possible that this time next year we, we start hearing a lot of Chinese companies going bankrupt. That being said, I also suspect that by this time next year we'll have a lot of other companies outside of China going bankrupt too. I think, if anything, 2019 is setting itself up to be the year of of pain as far as video game companies and maybe the year of acquisitions because of that pain yeah. uh, Microsoft I wouldn't be surprised if they they in the, over the course of the next year acquire several more companies uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article PS4 has over 86.1 million units sold. Five years into the lifespan, Sony's latest console has already topped the PS3's lifetime total, but trails the PS2's record setting, setting pace. Minions cost zero this turn. Choose a minion and summon a copy of it, add it to your deck. I kind of love this card more than anything else. I guess I have to take that. Like, I don't think we have to go much further into the article though, yeah. The PlayStation 4 has sold pretty well. Not amazingly well, but not bad either. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna ever beat the PlayStation 2's sales though, because PlayStation 2 sold itself as being also a CD player and DVD player uh, in the era when CDs and DVDs are a big thing. When I look at my anime shelf to the left of me and just look at all the DVDs and a very small number of Blu-rays uh, in comparison, like DVDs were the big thing for a certain 
certain sect of fans, uh, particularly if you're or a fan of some niche uh, movies or TVs that that weren't being rerun on cable television over and over again at the time, which that would have been quite a lot. Nowadays, with Netflix and streaming, it becomes less necessary and less realistic that somebody even needs to own a DVD player or Blu-ray player. Uh, you can get a nice 4K TV. I I'm looking to buy a nice 4K smart TV during Black Friday. Uh, so, like, with that, there's, there's really no reason to plug in an accessory that plays disc-based formats it, for most people still for me I, I would probably want a blu-ray player uh, I still have a decent collection of blu-ray things is there anything I can do to kill this guy not really but I could do this and then this and then this and continue to do damage Moving on, we have a game on Steam called Button Pals Take One Home With You. This looks like it's an MS Paint level of quality graphics for like a cell phone game. And I can't even really figure out what it actually is. Hmm. But it's $2.99 and it doesn't really look that good. It looks like it's probably like a Tamagotchi style game or something. I, don't know. I have no idea. But I, with the level of acting, and I assume those are the developers of the game, this certainly doesn't look like something that needs to be played or covered. Alright, destroy a random. Playing. So yeah, I'll, that's not making it to the list. We have a game on Steam called Daffin Oil Painting Village, an immersive reality. That seems seems like somebody just took some Google Street View shots and is just trying to put it in a VR game. I have no idea what the Daffin Oil Painting Village is. And clearly this is like a... I don't know if this is a Japanese developer, but it's a VR game. It's free, so the price is right. It's only in English. Hmm. Daffin. This looks like it's some kind of Asian area. But I have no idea if it's supposed to be in Japan or Korea or what. Explosive trap. Play this. And keep on going. I serve the fire lord. I serve the well, fire lord. If I was to get a VR headset, almost certainly what would happen. I'm noticing what, what's getting painted here in the videos is a lot of just uh, copies of famous paintings. So, I don't know if you're going straight to forgeries here, but yeah, it's... I don't know if you make that claim and call it forgeries, or if you just say, okay, well, it's, it's something else. Let's go ahead and take this victory. Yeah, I would say this is probably China. If the streets are not not clean enough and empty enough to be Japan. Hmm. Oh, but yeah, what I was gonna say is if I get VR. A VR headset and that's a huge if that probably never happened I'd probably go off the deep end and try all kinds of VR things um, 
and and just this would be a game like that or it's not even really a game where I'd go yeah I'll try this out and spotlight it but I frankly doing VR is probably less less desirable in my mind than just scraping the bottom of the barrel as far as Steam goes and playing some really obscure not that good games so yeah I'm just gonna close that and not add it to the fall list let's see uh, moving on, Gamatsu, the Kickstarter campaign has been launched for Mega Man X and Zero inspired action platformer Gigabuster. So it's not a Kickstarter for Mega Man X, or, and it's not a Kickstarter for Mega Man Zero. It's, it's a Kickstarter for a game called Gigabuster that is claiming to be inspired by Mega Man X and Zero. Like, ridiculous. Is seeking twenty thousand dollars to funding a release of the PC uh, uh, in March of 2019 and fifty thousand dollars stretch goal for a Switch version. This is an example of the type of games I don't really want to talk about or care about because, like, uh, honestly, I don't even want my fans to support Kickstarters. Because if your game is good, you should be able to get funding other ways. If your game isn't good, or if there's reasons why you can't make your game idea good, you won't get the funding, and Kickstarter is a scam. I don't personally believe in the concept that the average uh, citizen should be allowed to invest in companies in any way, even when it's something as simple as, like, uh, like just investing in stock portfolios I think there's such a level of lack of understanding and a lack of transparency that you should be at least an accredited investor and as for people who want retirements and 401ks it shouldn't be 401ks it should just be bonds guaranteed return bonds uh, and there's literally no way unless the United States government uh, collapse that you're not going to get the amount of money that you're being told you would get as you continue to invest in your retirement. Uh, the idea that even one person could invest in a bad 401k and lose it all and be at retirement age at 72, at 75 and be told, oh, you're going to starve to death now because of your of bad investments a bad gamble that you made when you were really really young all right I need to play this next turn but otherwise I think I'm okay to do this but if I play this next turn I can't use my special ability anymore that's gonna suck oh well Uh, moving on, TechRaptor has an article, Console Minis Jumped a Shark with the PC Classic. Uh, I kind of have to agree with this idea. The idea of what taking what looks like a Raspberry Pi and, and putting some DOSBox emulator, Windows 95 emulator on it, and then getting the licenses to a bunch of uh, really old PC games <laughs> and putting it on there it doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense and it's a hundred dollars too so for four hundred dollars you could easily yourself build a much better Raspberry Pi, Pi system I have uh, that that would allow you to to play not just PC games but also run emulators of all sorts of games for a for hundred dollars if you're pretty frugal and you already own some controllers and some cords and things 
you could make a better version of the NES Classic, the Super NES Classic, uh, and, and the PlayStation Classic, and the PC Classic combined. With perhaps a slight exception of the fact that at least the Super NES Classic gives you some something that a new game that might be a little bit harder to find a ROM for, but probably not in the form of Star Fox 2. I didn't do that, right? I should have put it over there. I would also say this PC Classic does not look good. <laughs> It's ugly, the case they decided to use. Uh, P old PCs didn't look great in the first place, but they're certainly not going with a really, really good looking, familiar, recognizable case either. Hmm. We don't need to listen to that. Backing in. Another loss. No surprise there. Let's play as the hunter still. Let's see. Yeah, I haven't won with any of those, have I? Next we have a game on Steam called Rexa, Legend of Koyanis. Suffering from dark screenshot syndrome. And I adjusted the screen so it's basically as bright as as I could get it. Seems like it's probably a very low frame rate walking simulator through a cave. Yeah, it's just looks like an asset flip if I've ever seen one. Um, it's doing something slightly different. $3.74 discounted. I would say it's doing something slightly different than the fact that it's a walking simulator asset flip in a cave versus the standard walking simulator asset flip in a open field. Next we have a game on Steam called Mine Royale Battle Royale. Another asset flip, low polygon, Roblox clone. Job's done. Uh, 99 cents, very low effort game. Again, not making it to the list. Next we have, let's see, how, what do we want to do here? Guess we'll do this. Next we have a game called Where the Water Tastes Like Wine Fireside Chats. It is a free standalone version, a, a experience to, extension to Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. Um, I guess, I would almost certainly guess that the original game, Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, didn't sell well. And this is an attempt to perhaps get people to buy that game. But it also kind of feels like this might just be all of the storyline elements of Where the Water Tastes Like Wine without the gameplay. Um, let's see. It adds exclusive story content for all the folk tales from the main games, 16 characters. It also makes the entirety of the Dire Wolf's first chapter from the full game playable for free for those who have an experienced unique journey through the century of the Americana. So it's basically a demo. But I guess I'd put it on the wish list and then if I was ever to cover where the water tastes like wine, which is uh, kind of big if, then, then I would probably want to play this after the fact. It probably isn't before the fact. It almost feels like it's adding content to the full game also. So... So it's like free DLC and free standalone demo, which are two very different games and very different ideas. Alright. Let's go ahead and take that victory. 
moving on, GameIndustry.biz has an article. Uh, Mujo Games, M-U-J-O, has won a 25,000 pound transfuser competition. This UK game funds competition winnings are to fund the development of rhythm game Yellow Rock Road. So what else do I need to do? I need to use my hero ability because it doesn't didn't count at all while doing it in single player. Hearthstone really needs to put some asterisks and explain what can be done in single player and what can't because it seems like almost nothing can be done in single player. As far as these daily quests. And so yeah, five cards, 75 dust. That's actually more dust than I'm expecting. Wait a minute. Why is it 75 dust? Hmm. Well, whatever. I'll take it. Let's see. So now we just need to come over here and play. Just play ranked and use our hero ability. We're at rank 22. If we're gonna play hunter, that's probably the best one to play. Hmm. I'll leave that gameindustry.biz story where it is because I really don't care. I haven't heard of Mujo Games, nor am I interested in a rhythm game called Yellow Rock Road. Rexa versus Anduin. Let's see. The light shall Next, we have a game victory. on Steam Let's called hunt. Talk T O K. Okay. This looks like one of those games where you just spin around the shapes to make an arbitrary solution of shapes, generally trying to connect all the lines together. I played a game like this on my cell phone and it was fun for a little bit but eventually it just got boring. <laughs> like really really boring uh, because there's kind of nothing to it. It, it. Let's see if this developer has made anything else. Uh, yeah they made Oik, OIK and there's several different versions of Oik. And at this point, if I find a developer is just making the same game over and over again, uh, I'm not really willing to put them on the wish list because they're just spamming the, like, they're just spamming the, the Steam store. And this is certainly a simplistic one screen Unity game that can be skipped. So I'm going to grow some higher standards and, and just close that tab. Play this and this, and then my turn. I'm supposed to be using my hero ability. Tech Raptor has an article uncovering the burrow. An interview with Hidden Burrow co-founder Christine Christine McGay McGay M C G A H H E Y. Never heard of Hidden Burrow, and. Hmm. Seems like they make tabletop games. I don't think this is actually a developer of video games. No, it isn't. Okay, so this is the problem with so many video game companies these days is they literally are just half video games and now moving on to some other thing. Alright, let's play this. Let's do this. So yeah, I'm going to close that article, doesn't matter. Gamatsu has an article, Killer7 for PC is now available. Uh, so yay. I think we already kind of knew that. But just in case, I'll double check that it's on the wish list and not on the follow list. It probably was already on the wish list. I, I can say, well we could just show it off I guess. Killer7 rated very positive for the people nostalgic of it. It's already getting good reviews. Um, so, yeah, no big deal there. Just make sure it's it's on the list of things that I want to own. Hmm. Access 
I'm still not using my hero ability. I had um, quite the trouble, frankly, looking at the zero escape uh, uh, games. I think it's called the zero escape games, the nonary games, and zero time dilemma. Um, it's three games being sold as two packages on Steam, and the first two games look uh, look animated very differently than the than the last game. But you should play the last game last, and not the first game, uh, even though it seems like the first game might be first. So in the, in the end, it just boiled down to you should play the Nunnery games uh, first, and then Zero Time Dilemma uh, after that. Let's see. I'll just make sure I can start using the hero abilities. Uh, but that really was the only game series in all of the wish list that gave me any real trouble as far as trying to figure out what would be the actual order to play these games. Um, that being said, there still is big questions about Warhammer games, Final Fantasy games, JRPG games in general. Uh, there's a lot of different choices and a lot of different ideas. Let's see. And what do we want to do here? I comply. In the turn, I should have done damage to this one. Doesn't matter. Next, we have a game on Steam called Warhammer 40k Mechanius. Uh, I'm keeping basically all the Warhammer 40k games on, on my wish list, but it's highly unlikely I would play all of the Warhammer 40k games. It's kind of unlikely I'll play any of the Warhammer 40k games. But I'm gonna keep them on the wish list just in case. I don't know if I have a change of heart or or there is something that really makes a lot of sense uh, to play something like um, oh I don't know Vermin Tide Two is probably the closest one uh, if I was to consider it. Um, but I'm not even sure I'd want to to play Vermintide 1. Next we have a game on Steam called Perfect Life VR which looks like a Second Life clone asset flip style game. Seems like it's just cars and just girls. Uh, and somebody went in here and put in quite a big bust on these characters when you just look at their head size. Uh, and then their bus size and then the waist size is pretty small Yep, this is This is not a good game in the dollar 99 So yeah, it's not making it to the wish list Let's see Should I take the victory now or should I hold off for another turn? Let's just hold off for another turn. I'm gonna win regardless. If he concedes, he concedes. Next we have a game on Steam called Reentry Orbital Simulator. This looks like it might be like a Kerbal Space Program style of game. Or it might be a bit of an asset flip. It feels like it's a little too polished to be called an asset flip though. I don't know how how much of this I'd really want to do. It's early access, sixteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, for a game where there's any question, I suppose I'd just put it on the follow list, and we'll just see what the reviews say. It could be that people love this simulation, really are digging it. It doesn't seem like this supports VR, which this feels like a game that would totally be better in VR. Uh, 
but look at this panel do, you, do most people really want to want to deal with that or try to figure out how to to perform a re-entry with all those controls honestly though I mean I guess if you're doing a re-entry uh, depending on how strict the game is it's it's not that hard um, unless you have to land in a specific place and all you have to do is slow down your orbit and hopefully land in the water and not land on on ground I don't know how much of the factoring is actually done by the astronauts or how much of it is just done by ground control and it isn't just automatically pre-programmed or, or being run by by uh, computer or, or remote control Again, if it was a VR game, the experience of going through re-entry might be interesting. But you almost need not only a VR game, you need a, a like 4D shaking chair that you would see at a uh, amusement place uh, to shake the chair and, and give you G-force and turbulence. this I guess commander is an article uh, super dragon ball heroes world mission has been raided for Australia this is a card based dragon ball game uh, that is seemingly headed, headed Westworld according to Matsu um, let's see if it's a card based game it's on the switch Interestingly enough, hmm. approximately 1,160 cards from the Super Dragon Ball Heroes arcade game are included, as well as about 360 characters. That's a pretty well developed card game. And I, I know that the, there's a lot of Japanese card games out there, so like, it kind of makes some sense to try to bring them over to the west but I'm not sure if this is really gonna succeed yeah, it doesn't seem like it would come to a cell phone platform which would probably do it a lot better uh, or a PC platform where we might get some fall in there so we're both trying to win right now and uh, play Access denied. The hero ability. Mostly trying to win. Next, we have a game called Siam Twin Stick, which looks like a Super Meat Boy style game. No, it's a top down twin stick shooter game. Uh, okay. Notice how this game doesn't even have any tags. I'm fairly certain when the developer develops a game, they can put tags on it at this point because I've seen some games that haven't even come out yet that are tagged with like sexual content in it. And the question is, how do you know there's sexual content in it uh, if you're a user? How are you even tagging the game if, if you don't own the game? Uh, this is $3.51. Uh, discounted this looks very generic and I don't like top-down twin stick shooters in the first place so let's see so yeah that's not making it to the list next we have a game on Steam called a show of kindness she says it's an adventure, oh, casual, and VR game. Hmm. It looks kind of like a point-and-click adventure in 3D. It's going very dark, and that might be a mistake, but I'd also say it's probably slightly an artistic style. I'm going to watch this video and report back as I come over here and play. <laughs> So, so far all I'm seeing is 
like a camera flying around. And then there's this glowy colored line that the camera's zooming over. And it seems like this old lady is maybe sewing something with the glowy colored line. This is a Google developed and Google published game. So I bet this is one of more uh, of these Google VR experience that are more videos than anything else. I don't have enough money. Yeah. So yeah, this is a free Google. Uh, they were calling them Google like stories or something before. And now they're just straight up calling them by a name. It's it's like Google is flooding. <laughs> the the funny thing is, Steam kind of does have an argument to say Google, you're not allowed to put games on our our platform anymore because. All you're doing is flooding us with a bunch of, of like VR experience things that aren't actually video games. Hmm. All right, this one's gonna do eight damage, so I've got to do this. Well, actually, I should have done that, but whatever. That would have been a lot smarter. So I'll leave a show of kindness on the fall list. Um, time had the 50 top 50 in the in innovations for uh, or the top 50 innovations for 2018 and they put the Microsoft accessibility pad in there um, getting a full list though seems to be kind of uh, Kind of impossible uh, off of Tom's website, so whatever. Let's see, we do this, do this, do this, we do that, that, and that. I'm lost. Next we have a game on Steam called Diamond Caves. Looks really, really ugly. Like a Pac-Man clone or something similar to that. Whatever it is, it's not visually appealing. And it's $8.09 on discount on discount. That's way, way too much. Let's see, we still got quite a bit of hero powers to work and quite a bit of rank play. I guess if we have extra time, I'll come back and play rank play on the European account instead of the America's account, but since it needs more help. Next, we have a game on Steam, Battleships and Carriers, World War II Battleship game. Uh, looks pretty rough and pretty generic. I don't think that this is anything I would want to play. I'm sure that there are some World War II fans out there, or Bexa, fanatics Bexa. out there that might enjoy games like this, but uh, not me. $11.99 undiscounted. That is quite a lot. Remember, I had a lot of games left over from uh, from Wednesday, so that's why we're, we have so much to look through today anyways. Next, we have a game called Underworld Ascent that's already mostly negative. Uh, let's see. Buy now and receive the following things. Seems like... That's that's odd. I didn't know you could do something like that. Um, I'm trying to see if this is a single player game or yeah, it's a single player game, but clearly people are not liking it. 
It doesn't look terrible. So, let's come over here and then I'm gonna scroll down and take some extra time and figure out why people are disliking this game. Let's see, it's not really, this is an early access game, not ready. The game has a lot of potential, but it's uh, current state is frustrating. Some of the backstory before I go to initial impressions. Uh, the, nope, I'm not gonna read that. Not even close to done. So apparently this game was probably an early access and it just came out of early access. Mm -hmm. Or it should be an early access, and it was never an early access, and people are complaining about that. Which, generally speaking, like, people don't generally make that statement. Like, it's easier just to say this game sucks than it is to say this game has potential, but it's not ready and it should be an early access. Uh, by far. Um, I don't care about Underworld Ascent. This developer hasn't made anything else, so it really doesn't have any relevancy. And... Yeah. It's being published by 505 Games, which I think is kind of all over the board as far as games and now I'm running into trouble with Steam so I might want to be careful about clicking away. Uh, yeah, 505 games published Indivisible and Last Day of June and yeah, kind of just all over the board as far as games I've published. So yeah, that game is just not making it to the wish list or the follow list. I guess the followers would be the first thing. Next we have a game on Steam called Bargain Hunter, which says it's a simulation game. Hmm. See, I I'm not sure that this is a good game or a bad game or if it's just a really, really dumb idea of a game. Like, it's a little rough on the animation. One assumes that all these items are asset, pre-bought assets, but, hmm, and the, the question I guess would be, are you, are all the stats randomized or is this an actual game? Uh, and I guess if there's any question, and there is question here, I should just put it on the fall list and find out. So I'll put Bargain Hunt on the fall list and we'll see what happens. Next we have a game called VR Smash Park. Dark Screenshot Syndrome. Seems like you're standing in one place and doing a lot of shooting. And in Little whack-a-mole stuff. It's just so dark. Yeah, I don't know. This looks like this is a really long and slow uh, trailer. Yeah, I really don't have a desire to play a VR game where I'm just shooting through things over and over again. Particularly things that aren't even really running amazing physics in their shadow. Ten dollars. Yeah, that just seems ridiculous. Seems like it's asking for too much. Let's see. If I do this and then this. Yeah, seeing some actual video of VR Smash Park, you really are just standing in one place and shooting things like so many other games. Hmm. Next we have a game on Steam called Bad Dream Fever, which is 
labeled as a horror platformer, but I would say it's probably more closer to a point and click adventure. Hmm. It looks certainly creepy enough in some of the shots. And it's rated positively, so I think this is good enough to stay on the wishlist. I also think that there might be a couple of bad dream games in a series that are coming out. Maybe they're coming out a little too fast. That could be an argument to be made, but yeah, they certainly seem like they're coming out. Alright, do this. And do that. And that. And then that. And then in the turn. Next we have a game on Steam called Space Guard, which is clearly just an Asteroids clone. There's nothing impressive here. This looks really dumb. Uh, didn't really add or change anything to it at all. And it's just straight up copyright infringement, basically. 59 cents discounted. Yeah, no surprise there. Play. Still trying to use this as much as possible. And then this. And I'll do that, I guess. In the turn. Next, we have a game on Steam called Doodle Farm. This is just Doodle God without the God idea and more about animals. Uh, I believe probably from the same developer who's made the other Doodle games. Uh, as cell phone games, these are maybe slightly worth playing, but at $7.64, they don't really rise to a level of quality that makes any sense to play on PC. Yeah. And apparently, no, this is a developer. A completely different developer and publisher so either they're going under a different name or somebody just stole the doodle concept and is using that maybe you can't copyright the phrase doodle that I would be surprised if that's the case too Next we have a game on Steam called Judged a Court Simulator. The idea sounds interesting, the execution looks like total garbage MS Paint graphics. It's $4.19, I don't think that there's anything else that needs to be said about this game, it's not making it to the list. We could just get a couple of wind streaks, that would be nice. But I also might be done with our daily quests. Nope, I get, get to play one more game. Next, we have a game on Steam called Bomber Arena. It's clearly a Bomberman clone, not done very well in its tile set and textures. $4.49. If I keep running into these terrible games, we'll get all of this stuff done by the end of this recording which would be amazingly nice next we have a game called symmetric looks like a single screen unity game with an anime character giving you some tutorials this is the kind of game where i need to know what it looks like in motion okay it's a game where you spin things to make connections and solve the puzzles and make them I guess vertically or horizontally symmetrical while using all the pieces hmm I that looks like it's a bit of a challenge of course it is just a single screen unity game but it does look like something they would I could spend a little bit of time on. It's 59 cents discounted right now, so I'll put that on the followers. 
uh, well, won't make it to the fall list, almost certainly a spider lander, uh, which I assume is just a simple clone of the game lander. I don't know, uh, this is just like more evidence to the thought that Steam looks at games and approves them on their storefront in batches and ugly looking clones of very old games right, seem to be one batch. Well, it's just like, all right, we've seen this a million times before, but why not? Let's just let, let's just take the $100 Steam Direct fee from this person and move on. Um, yeah, I have to assume that Valve is making just tons and tons of money from these dumb people putting these terrible games on Steam when they could probably put these games for free on their own website and and get the same amount of exposure and sales. I want to do this, but I also want to. Nah, it, it, it's it's not worth it to do this right now. Oh, actually, I think it might be because this gives me some coverage in case they decide to use the fire blast. Let's see. Next, we have a game on Steam called Chucky Egg 2017 com uh, Challenges. This looks like a pretty bad platforming game. Yep. Mm. Nothing here looks good. Good enough to make it to the list. Two dollars and ninety-nine cents. No discount. Yep. Yeah, a game like this, I really don't even have to look at for more than half a second to say, okay, you've got random unconnected landers with random unconnected platforms with a generic, although slightly well animated background. Uh, there's just no polish there. Next we have another <laughs> ugly looking game, Croquet Pro. I'd be alright with playing a game where you're playing croquet, uh, but it would have to be a lot more professional than this game claiming to be professional. This is just a generic skybox with some pretty mismatched textures and graphics and like $6.15. I would also argue a lot like pool and a lot of the other physical games that you're just not going to get the same experience um, in, uh, okay, in a digital version than you would in the regular, in the real world version of the game. So yeah, Croquet Pro not making it. Oh, and look what we have here. We also have Croquet Pro 2. Ah, so, one assumes this is the same developer just releasing either games that have already been made and sold from years and years ago, or they straight up are just trying to flood the Steam marketplace. $6.15. I will say Croquet Pro 2 at least looks a lot better than Croquet Pro 1. But that's not a good reason to, to give them a pass and, uh, and actually purchase their game. And no Croquet Pro 3 after that tab. Instead we have um, GameIndustry.biz has an article. Chang Yu, that's C H A N G Y O U, has received the license to develop Tetris mobile games for China. So, Tetris Journey is to be the first of a series of releases for the Chinese online game operator. Now, what's interesting here is this is. Uh, I'm not sure the, if the company that, that owns Tetris right now actually is still the Russian government but that's uh, or the USSR government um, but that was how it was originally and the actual creator got 
at least at some point screwed out of a lot of royalties and a lot of money um, <laughs> for inventing Tetris. Um, but as far as that, that's old news that we'd have to do a lot of research to talk talk accurately about. Uh, as far as what this is, is I assume Cheng Yu has gotten the license from the Tetris company. Um, uh, but that doesn't mean that Cheng Yu in China has gotten the license to actually sell any new games because nobody has gotten any license to sell any new games. So without the, the both licenses, you're you're dead in the water. Uh, you really are dead in the water at that point. Time's up. Let's do it. So we can do a couple things there, and that's it. Like all Chinese companies, until they can start getting licenses to sell games in China, the, the, they're in a bad position. All they can try and do is sell games outside of China on Steam. Hmm. Moving on, uh, Gamato has an article, Langriser, that's L-A-N-G-R-I-S-S-E-R, -S -S -E Mobile is coming to the West. Let's see what kind of game it is. Um, it's a smartphone game, and it will be on the, um, says it's an RPG game. Yeah, I think I've heard of Langrisser as an RPG, fantasy RPG game. Yeah, it looks decent, certainly, for, for a fantasy RPG game on a mobile phone style game. I thought we had heard the end of stories like this, but I guess there's still a few more to, to a few more companies that want to announce things like this. Uh, one more game for me, I guess. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article, Mythical Games Will, quote, usher in a shift of play for player behavior, end quote, with a blockchain platform. Startup formed by ex-Activision and Blizzard execs. Is it the bad Activision and Blizzard execs or the good ones? Uh, raises $16 million towards a platform for player-owned economies. Yeah, right. Like this... Sounds like shenanigans to me. Let's see. <laughs> Here's a quote. There's a lot of hype about cryptocurrencies and blockchains creating a total gaming revolution. But there isn't a revolution coming because gaming isn't broken. I think gaming probably is slightly broken, and particularly with a lot of microtransactions and the thoughts of blockchain coming to save the day is ridiculous. Moving on, GameIndustry.biz has another article, Microsoft reportedly planning on releasing a digital-only Xbox One. This is a rumor that's been going around, so the, this is kind of a repetition of something that I've already heard lots of people say. Um, uh, the discless console would be considerably cheaper and come alongside disc, a disc to digital program. Which, how does this disc to digital program work? Uh, do you mail in your discs? Uh, do you take a picture of the disc and text it to somebody? Uh, do you run the disc in your uh, PC and then it streams a license? Let's scroll down and see what this works with. To permit those with physical games to still play their titles on the console, Microsoft will reportedly also launch a disc to digital program that allows participants to turn in physical game discs for digital 
downloads at participating re retailers. Jeez, I, I'm not sure there would be too many participating real realtors in that. I think GameStop would probably not be happy with that arrangement at all. Um, let's see. A new Xbox... Also, the report is that a new Xbox One S with a lower price point but still using a disk drive will be announced in 2019, leaving the next generation of consoles whose disk or no disk state is still up in the air for Microsoft apparently for 2020. Hmm. Yeah. I could kind of see that, but I also kind of don't see that. I, if Xbox One did have a smaller cheaper discless version so that would probably sell well minutes. in Japan which is where it really really needs to sell if if they're ever gonna get a foothold in Japan and and get better connections with Japanese companies now would be the way to do that um, and I could certainly see some ideas of that happening but I could also certainly understand if all of this is ridiculous uh, speculation that's just been made up and uh, next E3 the Xbox 2 is announced and all these rumors prove to be completely false and wrong. Gamma Sutra has an article, Rovio is looking to quote, accelerate growth with brand, with new games as Angry Birds 2 revenue climbs. I think Rovio definitely does need to make new games from new series too. I don't think they can just lean on the Angry Birds series for as long as they have been. Either that or Rovio is going to just collapse and, and go out of business. Which I wouldn't be surprised if that happens also. Um, Rovio is in a lot of ways the experience, the example of one of the best, su most successful cell phone game developers and if they can't even succeed it's just a really really bad statement on, on the state of having an actual industry where you could make money as far as making mobile games. Let's see, next we have a... I think this is probably some kind of Russian troll game. I don't know who these people are or what, but like it doesn't seem like it's probably anything that that I care about. It's 99 cents. So yeah, I think this is some kind of political troll game. Maybe it's not even a Russian game. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So we'll leave that where it is. Let's see. And take the victory. Keep that win streak bonus going. I think if I could just get a couple more victories, and I don't want to end on a win streak, so I'm just going to keep on playing. Um, if I could just get a couple more victories, I'd make it to at least rank 20. And like, I'd like to get to at least rank 20 by the end of this year, uh, by the end of this month. Uh, but it, it is going to be a busy month, too. Uh, if they come out with a new expansion in November... That's going to kind of suck and take a lot of time. Even if they don't, the uh, Steam Black Fr and Black Friday sales are about a week away. That's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to really try and beg and get people to, to gift games doing the Steam sales. Or if you get like game codes doing some other Black Friday sale. Like try to get more support for the channel, more games for the channel. There's still a lot of games that... I don't own that I'd like to own. I'd like to have a much better list of games to choose from starting next year. Newer games in particular. 
Is someone injured? Next we have a game called Chessboard Kingdoms that I'm not a hundred percent sure about. I think this might just be a low effort asset flip or it might not. I'm gonna leave it in the category of just putting it on the fall fall list though. Like we can see if this is uh, if this is something that makes sense or if this is just a ridiculous idea. Alright, we do this. We do this. We do this. And we do that. And then in the turn, that was probably a mistake. Let's see, yeah, he just healed himself to draw a card. this point I don't need to use the hero ability next we have a game on steam called the occluder which would be something that blocks your vision and definitely a lot of dark screenshots syndrome here like it's just an asset flip walking around the scary forest um, like I seriously doubt that there's anything else here. Yeah, uh, skipping through that, through the video, I did, definitely didn't see anything there of interest. So I'm gonna close that. So this, this, in the turn. The Master has an article, A Devil May Cry animated series has been announced from the Castlevania executive producer and it's connected by quote bootleg you multiverse. <laughs> the subtitle of this article is Don't Worry the Jabronis in Hollywood Won't Mess It Up. And that's from Gamatsu making that, that thing. So... Yeah, it's an interesting idea, certainly, it, if the Castlevania series seems to have succeeded for, for both uh, Castlevania as a game series because it made a little bit of hype for the latest Castlevania game, and it succeeded for Netflix because it got a few more people to stay subscribed to Netflix, I'm sure. In fact, if anything, I'd say the Castlevania series has been probably one of their best investments in an anime style of show, where a lot of their other anime style shows fail kind of badly. Um, so I haven't watched Castlevania season two. I want to get around to it. I just find the extra time. I would watch the Devil May Cry mm. series. Also, though, as a person who hasn't played any of the Devil May Cry series except for the reboot of DMC, I sort of question maybe I'd spoil some very generic things if I watched the series before playing the Devil May Cry games. But I don't think it really would matter too much. Like, I don't think it's a series that's too much about actual story as much as it is about just. Um, uh, just high action button mashing. Gamma Sutra has the same article. Sony will not be present at E3 2019. Uh, not be present is a way odd way to phrase that because uh, they will have no active, uh, will not activate or hold a press conference around E3 is the quote. Mm. Listen to the quote, we are exploring new and familiar ways to engage with our community in 2019 and can't wait to share our plans with you. Mm. So yeah, it, it, I don't think I, I took it that they, they 
absolutely would not have any presence at all, but I'm, I guess that is the, the case. But they're not even going to have a booth or have somebody there. Apparently, the Criterion Collection is launching an independent Criterion channel in the spring of 2019 um, in partnership with Filmstruck. I wonder... For anybody who's into Someone called movies, Argan. that's not very, very game related, though. My seal for Argan. So, yeah. Take that for whatever it is. I probably need to wrap up here, but kind of don't want to. I want to break the streak. Ooh, I wonder what this does. Okay. How are we gonna handle this? Here and then here. Which means I could have played this later and gotten. Uh, no, I would have gotten the same amount of joeys, so that didn't matter. Then I can do this, and then I can do this, 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 and then in the turn. Gameindustry.biz has an article: Nvidia's stock drop after quarter three guidance miss. Shares fall as much as 19% as the company continues lower than expected guidance for quarter four. So hopefully, it would be really, really nice if Black Friday came around and there was some good deals on a 1080 Ti, 1080 in general. I'd love to buy a new video card. It's a big investment, certainly, but, but I, I think it needs to happen. Uh, but I'm not sure if... NVIDIA stocks dropping would, would have them rush to release sales that they weren't already planning on releasing and generally NVIDIA really doesn't have too much competition so I, I don't think just out of the blue they would give really really good deals to, to people. That one. I think we're close to victory again. We have a game on Steam called Guns and Ghosts. I hope my web peak is working. It should, but it's going to start breaking again. Uh, probably by next stream, depending on what I decide to record. Hmm. Guns and Ghost is from Drunken Apes, which is a developer of uh, very low effort games. Yep. Sometimes their names aren't so obvious that it, that's obvious that, that that's the case. So yeah, that's not making it to the list. You have been. I could really list about half a dozen game companies that that should should totally not be on on Steam's uh, platform right now. Hmm. Let's see. TechRaptor has an article. Discord early access launches with five new titles. Uh, let's see. First title is Descender. Then Parkasaurus. Then Kinseed, K Y N S E E D, and then the last three titles Visage and Mad Machines. So, games 
that are brand new games that would not probably even make it on my radar if they were released via Steam Direct. Um, so yeah, Discord in their plan to turn their chat app into a platform that sells video games is not really blowing me out of the water right now. Uh, TechRaptor has the same article, new Xbox One without disk drive reportedly in the works. Like, honestly, I think people who are writing these articles are overvaluing what the cost of a disk drive is. Like, disk drives aren't that expensive, really. Uh, a Blu-ray disk drive, maybe $50. And, but probably when you're buying it at scale and and you're you've got a good deal like Microsoft would have uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's l as low as 15 maybe even five dollars for the disk drive that that's not that does not make a hundred dollar cheaper uh, platform what you could do to make the Xbox one cheaper are the things you don't want to do. You put a uh, less RAM in it, you put less uh, you put less uh, CPU, less a powerful CPU in it. Uh, you put a smaller hard drive in it. Hard drives are pretty expensive still. Um, you get rid of cords and you get rid of controllers. maybe of the type top five things you can remove from an xbox one disk drive is probably the one thing you could remove but it's almost a bait and switch trick too the the idea of oh we'll get you to buy this cheap one that um that doesn't have a disk drive get you into the platform and then your second Xbox One will be the disk drive one for for a hundred dollars more. Yeah, it, it doesn't make as much sense as, as people seem to think it does. If anything, I kind of would like the idea, particularly now that these Blu-ray, double layer Blu-ray disc games are taking two or three discs anyways, um, uh, of a disc changer option uh, I would totally love that if you could have five games in in your disk drive at the same time and it switch around that would be nice but you kind of don't need that in modern days because you could just like all the games are just installed on your hard drive anyways so uh, so why not instead just have a thing where you only have to put in a disc ever once or once every 30 days to verify that you still own the, the game to launch it and then all the other times you just go whatever just let them play it you don't need the disc in the drive um, okay that would kill me and that would kill me. This would keep me alive, but I don't like it. So, let's do this. Do this. And do that. Gamma Sutra has an article. Bandai Namco is shutting down its Vancouver studios. So Bandai Namco Studios Vancouver is shut down. Is what it really says. Uh, and the Vancouver office was responsible for Bandai Namco's wider mobile efforts and worked on a string of smartphone games based on the company's biggest franchises, including Tekken Mobile, Tap My Katamari, uh, Pac-Man Bounce, and Pac-Man 256. I don't think any of those mobile games were particularly good. And the only one I even recognize is Pac-Man 256, and I didn't even like that. Um, I do suspect that this is the beginning of 
a new Bandai where Bandai starts to focus again uh, as is kind of typical for Japanese game developers they're gonna focus specifically on on their Japanese titles and their Japanese offices and we'll start to see uh, very very few Western focused Western made uh, Bandai games well which is probably gonna suck because I'm uh, it's either Bandai or Capcom that makes Resident Evil So, yeah, I do think Bandai needs to make newer titles and support their older titles a little bit better. Uh, so maybe this is a way in which they can reallocate resources to do that also. It's always sad to see an office shut down, but when it's a mobile game developer, it's not quite as sad to me. Let's see. Next we have a game on Steam called Plastic Soldiers, which looks like an asset flip. Uh, there's a game series called Toy Soldiers, and this is clearly trying to copy that. And the idea kind of makes some sense, but I do not trust this developer enough to put this on the wish list. I guess maybe I could just put it on the follow list. Uh, but it's 84 cents right now, so you kind of know they're not going to put a lot of polish on this. You're much, much better playing Toy Soldiers, even though Toy Soldiers is kind of a tower defense game and this is a first-person shooter game. Uh, I think you would get a lot more entertainment from that. Okay. If I do this... And then do One this. And, and then in the turn. Hmm. So yeah, I'm not gonna keep an eye on plastic soldiers. Game of has an article: Supercell sinks 5.7 million dollars into the smartwatch game develop developer Everywhere Games. The idea of smartwatch games coming out is a pretty ridiculous one in my opinion. Uh, Supercell, I guess, has the money because they're the developers of, uh, of Clash of Clans. And so, yeah, I guess, I guess that makes some sense. That, that if anybody was going to do it, it would be Supercell. But the fact that cell phone games haven't really succeeded yet, and you're already moving over to smartwatch games, is pretty ridiculous. Uh, this is going to be our last game, uh, particularly if I lose. Uh, Street be damned. Uh, because I, I need to break up into a third recording. Now, I don't want to be cruel here with this next statement, but I'm probably going to be cruel. Yeah. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article, quote, I am NEVER in all caps making another game, end quote, Blazinski. That is. Cliff Blazinski, former co-founder of Boss Key, the one that that shut down Boss Key community, uh, and basically did it, in my opinion, in a very self-centered, ungracious way, not really caring or or really even spending too much time warning people that work there, uh, just talking about how he was sad for himself, and that was it. Uh, Bosky co-founder announces departure from development on Twitter. Later, he confirms, "Quote, I'm done." Good. I, it, like, I don't want to be cruel, but it, good. The truth is, Cliff Brzezinski should have never been a boss. He got lucky and made some good games in his early years. He let it go to his head, and he he 
got in a position of power that he should have not been. He's never really grown up or um, or become more mature. He's never really done anything since those good old days that that justified him being in charge. Um, let's see. Let's see. A former boss key employee noted receiving three weeks of severance pay instead of months, to which uh, Blazinski replied, maybe I used hyperbole, but I'd like to think I did the right thing. So yeah, the, the boss key employees are not super happy with him either. Uh, frankly, in all honesty, if you could sit down with Cliff Blazinski and say, Give us our, your ideas. We'll see. We'll see if we can make them work. And then you give it to a game producer that's actually good, a writer. You polish it up. You take his kind of gamer bro mentality and you polish it into a good game. You can have a good game. The problem, I think, for Cliff Bozinski is that much like George Lucas, he was put in charge and nobody would question him and nobody had the authority to say no to him. Uh, that's where we got the Star Wars prequels instead of the first three Star Wars original movies which where George Lucas was getting under control uh, by like his wife and uh, at the time and, and just other people. Anyways, we're a little late to wrap up this recording, but we're doing pretty good. We can move over to the the Asian account. Um, didn't quite make it to rank 20, but I think by the end of the month we will at least. That's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below, and you can support me down below through Patreon or through gifting me a game on Steam. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.